All right, this is a quick demonstration of a chapter four from the textbook. Uh, basically, the whole idea is applying the only partial uh, part to analyze the whole disk. In this case, we are making the only one eighth portion of the whole disk. It's a pretty much a standardized test of a disk with a hole at the center. Uh, we're going to spin with a very high speed and we're going to find out how this um, the part will be deformed. But again, the major idea is instead of using the whole the part, we are using only uh, partial uh, of the part. So that you can save a um, good amount of the meshes, which is the number of the knot point, which will be allowing us to finish the calculations fairly quickly. Right, so I already made a part using the part design of bench. As you can see it in the sketch, it's made a simple rectangle with six inches, one inches, which will be the diameter of the hole, uh, making two inches, so 12 inches diameter of a disc, and here is one inch of our thickness. So once the sketch is done, then using that sketches, I'm revolved shaft and, and I did only 45 degrees so I got the only one eight portion of the whole disk. So using this one we are going to analyze the whole disk. So obviously we need to apply the symmetry theory in this plane and also in this plane. So the, this one is simple because it is perfectly lined up with the global coordinate system. Uh, so just applying the slider will be easy but this plane is nothing aligned properly with the global reference so in this case we have to create our own coordinate system and to establish the user defined the restraint to mimic the surface slider you're doing in this side so before I move on to the GSA I'm going to insert the brand new Axis system which will be used later. Then I'm gonna use this corner. Then I wanna make this one is uh, established as x direction. So I can click right here. There we go. Then I wanna make this direction as a z direction. So I'm gonna jump to the z and click this. And then instead of going down, I want to make a going up as opposed to the Z, so I'm going to reverse. So using the uh, rule of the right hand rule, uh, then you should be able to make the Y axis direction this way as well too. So this is positive X, positive Z, positive Y axis. Looks good. So I got the brand new one. So now currently this the whole part design is relying on this brand new axis we put it so I am going to uh, go back to the axis system we just created then we are going to not use it as a current axis so that means I am relying on the global coordinate system so if I again doing the trimetric or oh, isometric you can see it rely really on global coordinate system now. So looks good. Then now we are ready to go to GSA. Uh, right here. Or we'll go to analysis and there is a GSA. Of course we're doing steady analysis. Then we can start with the tetrahedron, right the mesh. So obviously there are a lot of curvature going on here, so I am going to use a parabolic and to throw about three or four meshes, uh, I'm going to have about 0.3 inches as initial size. Three. Then I'm going to confirm when it is good, good start point it is. So once I visualize the knot, then I can see it. Uh, one, two, three, four matches are thrown into the finished part. So actually what I'm worrying about is around there, I have only three matches, but obviously we need to make this mesh gradually smaller so that you can see much better fit and we'll be able to calculate more accurately. Alright, to apply 
the purple property material, uh, we can actually apply the new material here. And also we apply the new property here. But since all of them are imported from the Swift file, we already made it. So we need to worry about now, but we'll cover this later. Uh, under the steady case, we need to start to apply the purple restraint and load so that we can get the solution for these cases. As we discussed, restraint and load cannot be loaded into the, our mesh. So definitely we need to deactivate it so that we can access the plane and access the buttocks for the restraint and load. Uh, like we talked about it, we are going to use a surface slider in this side because we are assuming the exactly same thing is happening this side from this side. That's good. The problem is again right here. We don't have any datum plane. Global plane is not really aligned with the, this one at all. So we're going to make our own. So we're going to use the user defined restraint and we are going to apply it into this plane. But in this time, instead of a global coordinate system, we're going to have our own user coordinate system. So then we're going to pick up that new axis system we added it. Then uh, the direction, the direction of restriction we're going to apply it is making this one look like a meter. That means this direction, which is we use as an X or number one, and this direction, which is our Z direction, number three. So it will be allowed. It. So only the normal direction that the plane should be restricted. So I am going to restrain the Y direction only, second one. So there is no this movement. But two, we mimic to repeat the same principle with rotation. We should be able to rotate based on the Y axis by the X axis rotation or Z axis rotation should be uh, limited so that we don't have this direction, normal direction to the plane is not happening. So that makes that one and three rotation should be restricted. So basically, if you restrain the one linear directions translation, then the totally opposite set of a translation will be your rotation one to make the symmetry cases using the user defined restraint. All right, I got the one. So we apply the symmetric city using this one using surface slider since we have a global coordinate system match well for this one. It is not, so that's why we got the brand new uh, coordinate system. And based on this new coordinate system, we made a brand new user defined restraint. All right, the load will be actually spin really fast. So we are going to use uh, rotation force, which is allowed to put input any RPM term per minute as a uh, rotation or speed, and it's required to uh, pick up the axis. So obviously I didn't make the axis yet, so I'm going to go back to my par, and again, make sure the global coordinate system, I will be able to make a brand new reference line, start from the zero, zero, probably. And I'm going to make the second point will be only 1.5 inches higher there we go so that we can make it this brand new reference line so we can use this reference line for the rotation on axis if i go back to the analysis and that same axis is there so if i i'm gonna go up to steady case if i go back to rotational force the axis, the support will be whole part, and the axis will be this new axis reference axis line. We made it, but then we're going to turn it in a certain speed. So let's say maybe 20,000 RPM, really high speed. And if you want, again, you can use acceleration as well, too. So say okay. So we got the purple restraint applying the symmetric city in this direction and also this direction and also applying the purple load so it should be good to go 
but it's not going to work <coughs> as we know uh, because of the, this two directional the restraint only actually this is a free to move up so this part will fly away so we'll see it so let, let me quickly compute all of them okay yes then you're gonna see a factorization matrix computation error message show up that makes that this part is not taking any load it's just uh, simply uh, run away from the problem so to solve the problem, we need to know which way this part is move away. So, best way to check is just simply check your activated deformation. That way, sometimes you need to deal with the magnitude. Uh, that way, you will be able to see if you animate it, you will be able to see which way is it actually flying away. So, you can see in this case, as we try to apply uh, rotate it, because it's a restriction in these two planes, it's simply sliding up, so flying away up direction. So now we got the idea, in G direction, this part is moving away. So once you got the idea, go back to the steady case, deactivate your uh, deformation. So now we need to use a brand new, another user-defined restraint. In this case, we are going to use a vertex, which is a pinpoint down, with a certain direction you restricting so that in this case a G direction only then rest of the movement is allowed and right there so that we actually pushing down uh, almost like a clamping down but may uh, make a whole part able to take any load or deformation is happening of course it's not going to be user uh, uh, coordinate system we have to go back to the global coordinate system now you can see so this restraint is the applied to the vertex so that it doesn't really fly away once it's done if you compute one more time it will be a little bit different story now again just like the last unlike the last time which has the factorization error problem it doesn't have it so that makes that whatever happened here will be same here whatever happened here will be same here so the symmetric is uh, perfectly applied it. So now time to find out what kind of deformation is happening. So I'm going to activate it. Of course if you go back to the magnitude then you can see how much the magnitude is there. So I'm, if I go back to like only 10 times, okay, then you can see it very slightly as you spin the 20,000 RPM. Let me look at from the top view. I don't know whether you can see it. Oh, let me change the magnitude again. So let's say 50 times. And obviously you can see it. So 50 times more uh, exaggerated of visualization. And you can see how it is actually expanding. So as it speed uh, catch up, the part start expanding outside. All right. So, but as you can see, based on this plane, based on this plane, there's no normal direction of a movement, only happening through this meter, the plane we apply the symmetricity. So that's exactly the point we wanted it to do. All right, the same way we can turn on bonuses. Okay, so it's like we're getting about 30,000 psi of a strength builded it inside. This is a troublesome. And also we can see how much it is actually displacement is happening. So you can see the outside is getting the more displacement than inside. So about thousand inches of a difference is happening. If you want to activate all of them at the same time, uh, I can turn, go back to the isometric view. I can go back to the old uh, post process. So it will be overlapped each other. It's not really bad, actually. Seeing the old direction at the same time, the stress distribution is not a bad idea. But if you want to see it all separated as one shot, you can add it away out. So let me say in X directions, about six inches apart each other. And instantly, you can see all those three. 
the deformation, bar misses, stress, and also displacement. If you click the ribbon, you will be able to uh, move around your ribbon so that you can relocate it. Click, click, either click, move, and click to go back. So that way you can uh, assign the proper ribbon or numbers with the color code. Uh, again, if you want to capture all this for the report, you can just simply go to image capture. My recommendation is to using the pixel mode and under the options, uh, make sure you use the under pixel, use a white background and turn on the anti aliasing and with higher uh, resolution so you will get really clean and nice white background capture so you can capture and you will get very nice uh, uh, pictures will come out so you can copy it to the clipboard and then you can paste it in your word document or so somewhere any application or another page all right again this is not end of the story you have to check whether your uh, the calculation is converted into the single solution. So later we will learn the adaptive uh, the meshes, which is uh, until you meet the criteria, automatically it changes the size or match for you. But in this point manually, I want to continually drop the mesh size. For example, 10% again, 10% again, 10% again, and again. If you reactivate the reader, you will see the tendency of your maximum value by simply going to okay, you're going to impose the max value right away. You can record it so that you can see the tendency of your calculations. And confirm is converged. All right. Hopefully, it was helpful, and I will we'll do more complicated and different uh, cases for the free analysis in the Katia. Thank you.